Today's, today's daf is daf chaf zayin. And we're a little bit behind. We're up to daf chaf vav um, by the Tanur Abanan, about like 10 lines, uh, uh, 12 lines from the top. Tanur Abanan. Uh, we're going to go here. Let's just add. Tanur Abanan. Amru Lai. The Gemara is dealing with very uh, depressing topics, obviously. And Loi uh, Aleinu, this is what happened. Tanur Abanan. And, and remember, you have to bear in mind that ripping a shirt was a very expensive proposition during that time. Um, and therefore, you didn't want to rip more shirts than you needed. Hi, Alan. We're just beginning. Hi. We're just beginning. Chavav Amid Beis, about 12 lines from the top. Tana Rabbana, the rabbis taught. Amru loy meis aviv. Someone, they told the person that his father died. Vikara, and he ripped. Then they told him, meis benoi, your son died. So instead of making a new rip, uh, he added to the father's rip. So he extended the father's rip. I'm not sure why they do that, but I guess it must have been their types of clothing that they had. It must have been a difficult thing to make a new rip. So it was much easier to extend an existing rip. So the Gemara says, You could sew for your son, you actually can uh, sew it back up after the shloishim, right? You can sew it back on. So, because that was the addition that you added for your son. But Elyon, but the top part, the original rip, Enemesacha, you can never sew back because, because it's it was uh, for your father and mother. And the din is that you can't you can't sew for your father and mother. Sew it back up. What happens? The first rip was Mace Benoy, your son died, the car and you ripped. Mace of the Emoy, Mace of it, then you, they told you your father died, the and you extended the original rip. So then the, it's a funny thing. Elyon Miss Ache, you can sew the top uh, part of the rip, but Tachtoin, which was the bottom part of the rip, which was for your father, Eina Miss Ache, you can't sew it ever back up. What happens? Loya Leinu, a huge uh, tragedy. They told you, they told this guy, Mace Oviv, Mace Imoy, Mace Ochiv, Mace Achoisa, his whole family died. So, Koirea Kera Echad Lakulam. The halachi is that you make one rip for all of them. Rabbi Yehuda ben Becerra Oimer, Rabbi Yehuda ben Becerra says, no, you're right. Al kere echad. You rip one for everyone. But al ave val imai, but for the father and mother, kere echad, you have to make a separate rip. I'm not sure if you make a separate rip for your father and mother, or you could put them both together. But you make one rip, so you're going to have basically two or three rips. Why? Lefisha aid my sifin al kere ave v'imai. You can't add... Rabbi Yehuda ben Maseri disagrees. He holds if you're ripping the top uh, part for your for your for your uh, relative, then you can't extend and rip uh, extend it for your father and mother, because that's that. Or in, in, I'm sorry, the opposite. If you rip for your father and mother, you cannot extend it for the other people, because because um, um, because because it's. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't look like you're ripping for them because it looks like you just uh, made a big rip for your father and mother. So it's not. It's not nicker. So the Gemara asks, uh, "In addition to your father and mother's rip, it wouldn't work." My timer. The opposite doesn't work either. In other words, if you would rip for your uh, uh, another relative. You, it's not respectful to rip, uh, extend that rip for your father and mother. So therefore, Rabbi Yudav and Sarah holds, you have separate rips for uh, certain, for the relatives, and a separate rip for your father and mother. Amar Shmuel Shmuel said, Allah Rabbi Yudav and Sarah, if this ever happened, Allah is like Rabbi and Sarah, that you have to rip twice. So the Gemara asks the question, does Rabbi Shmuel say like that? Shmuel, Shmuel says, we go lenient when it comes to Avelis. And therefore, the Tanakama hold, you could rip one for all the relatives and your father and mother. And, and Shmuel is saying, no, the halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda ben Maseira, that you have to rip separate rips for your father and mother and for the relatives. So the Gemara answers, Avelis l'chut, kriya l'chut. Yes, regarding Avelis, we go lenient. But when it comes to ripping, it's a new din. It has nothing to do with the Avelis, and therefore you could go strict. In fact, Kriya may have a basis in the Torah. As we've seen many times in Tanakh, the Gemara quoted, that they ripped. 
So uh, it has a basis in the Tanakh, and therefore uh, we go strict by the Kriya Halachas. At Hecha Kriya, how far is called a rip? How, how, till, how, long, how long is a rip? So the Gemara says, Ad Tiburai, you rip to your navel. The Yeshayim and others say, Ad Liboi, you rip to your heart. Afal Pishain Ra'ayel the Dover, even though if you don't, if there's no proof, Zeichel the Dover. Shinema Vakir Levavchim Val Begdechem. Now, what I'm pointing out to you, your original rip is for a tefach, but if you're adding to that rip for other, other, other people that you're supposed to sit shiva for, then you can continue ripping up until you reach either the navel or your heart. But once you go beyond that, it's not a rip anymore. And therefore, if you loyal lenu, you need to rip again, you'd have to make a bring, brand new rip. That's what the Gemara Brisa says. Hegiel the tibur, you reached your belly button or your navel, and then you can't go any further. And you, now you have to rip for somebody else. So Marchik Sholish it's boys, the Kireya. You could uh, go a distance of three fingers and make a new rip. Nismale Milfanov, if all the rips are ripped in front of you, in other words, in, in, in front of you have a bunch of rips, you can turn the, 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 the shirt around and make a new rip uh, by wearing it backwards. Nismale Milmala, if you have a bunch of rips on top of the baguette, you could, you know, uh, turn it upside down and start ripping again. Says the Brisa, if you rip from the side, and min hatsdodim is this picture over here, where you're not ripping by the neckline. According to um, you're ripping by over here on um, this point. I'm going to draw it right over here. Instead of ripping by the neck, you could rip. If, if you ripped on the bottom, that's not called a rip. Even if you rip on the top, but it's on the side, it's also not a rip. That's what the Gemara is saying. Ah, la yatsit ella. A coin godel, a coin godel who's not allowed to rip. By the way, a coin godel who doesn't rip, but he rips uh, just to be yitze, uh, like to make himself an agony, but not medin kriya. He ta- he actually does the rip on the bottom of his of his of his of his suit or whatever it is, but not on the top. Pligi ukva. They had an argument, Masna and Marukva, in the name of uh, the same type of uh, Machloikis, I think, in Sh- the father of Shmu and Levi had. Chad Rama once says, called Shiva Kareya, Lacha Shiva Moisif. Every, every, all the Shiva, if someone, let's say you ripped, right? Let's say a person ripped. And then the third day of the Shiva, they told him you have to rip again. So he can't, he can't extend the original rip because since he's in Shiva, he has to break a brand new rip. But after Shiva, since since technically you could sew it up, so if they told you that you need to, to, to rip again, so you don't have to make a brand new rip, you could be moist if you could extend the original rip because you already got up from Shiva. The Chadama, no, it's a little bit longer that. Kol Shloishim, the first 30 days, if you need to make a new rip, Kireya, you have to make a brand new rip. But if it's after 30 days, moisif, you can extend the original rip. So Maskif Lara Abzeira Abzeris asked the question. Mande Omar called Shiva Kare. The, the person that says that if you have to rip again during Shiva, you have to make a brand new rip. Why can't you extend the, the, the rip that you started the Shiva? Am I? Because the Linitin Lashirla, you're not supposed to hem it up. And therefore, therefore it's not considered a rip because it was, it's not, it's not, it's it's it's, it's ripping a rip, and therefore that's not considered a Yitzhi the mitzvah of Korea. But we have a, a, a statement, a teaching that a woman is permitted, even during Shiva, to hem things up, a rip up. She can like, you know, connect it back. So Hachinami, would you say a woman would be permitted to extend the rip instead of making a brand new rip? Uh, and instead of making a brand new rip, she would extend the original rip because technically she is the exception. She could actually hem it up. So the Gemara says, no, Hashem, the real, really a woman is supposed to keep, a, keep it ripped like a man. But Mashim Kvayt Isha, for the respect of a woman, we allow her to it, you know, hem it up. But really, technically, um, and, and we wanted to see it ripped by her as well. And therefore, it, it has to remain ripped. So, if some, so therefore, even a woman, if she has to rip again, if it's during Shiva, she has to make a brand new rip. She cannot extend the original rip. And then the Gemara says, Man de Omer kol shloishim that during Shloishim, you have to make a brand new rip. 
because you can't really sew it up well until after Shloshim. You can, you can hem it a little bit, but you can't really sew things up well until after Shloshim. Ella, but what would be a case? You have a, 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 a suit that you ripped because of your father and mother. So you're never allowed to sew it back up. Hachinami, would it be the same case over there that if in case you want to wear it because you need to rip because somebody else died, a brother died, you won't be able to extend it because this is, it's ripping a rip. That rip always has to remain a, a, is considered as if it's never sewn up. So the Gemara says, no, it, true, you're not allowed to sew it up, but technically you are allowed to sew it up. But Mishum Kvoid Ovevi who because of your honor of your father and mother, we told you not to. But really, we look at it as if it is ripped, as if it's sewed up. So therefore, if you need to rip again, uh, you would all, you would be allowed to extend that rip for your father and mother after Shloshim, according to this opinion. Okay, basically, it's hard for under, uh, us to understand. It's so easy for us to uh, to rip a rip a rip a shirt. But in those days, probably it was a very difficult situation. So that's why it was much easier to extend rips. New Gemara, Tanu Rabbanim, Hayotzi Bebeget Karu Elfneimes. A guy, he's a funny guy. He doesn't want to rip his clothing because it's a very hard thing to do. So what happens? He goes out and shows everybody he has ripped clothing, but really he was ripped for a different mace. So he's, he's, what, he's fooling people. So the Gebreiser says, You're fooling people. You're stealing the, the, you're stealing the knowledge. I'm, it's going to das of, of people who see you and think you ripped for the mace. And so you're, you're fooling people and it's not a good thing to do. Rav Shimon ben Gabriel Oimer. Rav Shimon ben Gabriel says, Oimer lechaber. A guy says to his friend, Hashi chalukha. Please lend me your shirt. Ve'elach vavakas abba shuhu chayla. I want to go visit my father. He's very deathly sick. Vaholach and he went and he borrowed his friend's shirt umetzoy shemais and he found that his father died. Koyreya he rips the the shirt umeachay and he can sew it back up because it's not his shirt. And the Kiddush is that he's permitted to rip the shirt because when the guy lent him, he understood that there's a possibility that the father's going to die and he's going to have to rip the shirt. When he comes back home, you can, you can return back the shirt and you give him the value of what a ripped shirt is now worth. You know, how much less it's worth than the original uh, when he first gave it to you. But if you didn't notify him that you're going to visit your father, you just asked for the shirt, you're not allowed to do a rip. And even if you, because you're stealing from the guy, he never gave you permission to take it, to use it as a Korea shirt. So therefore, even if you would rip for your father, whatever it is, uh, you wouldn't be Yitzhak the Kriya because you're doing a mitzvah, haba ba'avera. Tana Rabbanu, this comes up, this next halacha. Choyle shemes leimes, a very sick person that he's supposed to sit an aval. Ein maidir noisli shemes. You don't tell him that the person died. Why? Shemet itar of da'ate love. Maybe he's going to get into a shocked, confused state and he can he himself will be in danger. So we don't uh, tell them uh, that they die, that, they, that they're supposed to shit shiva. Sometimes even for a healthy person, we'll not tell them that they have to shit shiva. You don't really have to tell them because it, it's not stopping them from doing the mitzvah. As long as they don't know the news, they don't have to uh, sit shiva. But here the Kiddush is that you shouldn't, a sick person, make sure you don't tell him because you could, you could actually put the sick person in danger. They makarim before if you don't rip clothing in front of a, uh, a, a sick person, the wailing women that used to uh, um, make a lot of noise by Leviah, we make them silence. Then the Bryce says, nefesh. For the agony, we ask the cotton to rip his clothing, but not because there's a mitzvah to mechanich a cotton. A cotton really is potter from this mitzvah of Kriya, but we want people to see the agony of this family. So we asked the cotton to have a little rip. And you're supposed to rip for your father and mother-in-law uh, because to honor your wife. We learned in the small Masechta called, it's called Masechta Smachos. That's what we call it now. That Masechta of happiness. But these are the small Masechtas uh, that deal with Avelus. 
Aval loyani. Here's a. This is a something that people are not careful about. Aval, if you're sitting shiva, loyaniach tinek mesarcheka. You shouldn't like hold your little child in your lap, like a, like a, like your grandchild. Mipnei shemavir l'day schoik. It brings you to smile. Vinimsa miskane albrias. People will look at you funny. How you, how you're laughing at a time that you're sitting shiva. So therefore, it's like a socially off thing to do. Of stop playing around with your grandkids while the menachem are all around. The ain mavrin al mitzvah zekufas. Now we're talking about again socially off things. The mitzvah was that you had to feed the oval. The friends had to feed the oval, right? So the toner abanan the brisa taught the first day ha'hoylech lebeis oval. You go to the oval's house. If you are a friend, imhoyel liboy gaspoy. If you're friendly with the oval. You're also allowed to sit on an overturned bed, just like the other sitting on an overturned bed. If you want to like commiserate with him and you're friendly with him and it doesn't make the other feel uncomfortable that you're sitting low with him, then you can do it. Vim laugh. But if you're not the right person, you're not so friendly with the person. So if you're going to start sitting down and commiserating, it's going to make the other feel uncomfortable. Then you should make sure that you're feeding him with your chair, with your bed straightened out. Don't try to join him in what he's doing. And the Gemara says, again, a socially off thing to do. You have to be socially on when it becomes to visiting the Avelis. Rava Isrei Ben Milsa. Rava was sitting Sheva. Olegabe Abba Barta, this Abba Bar Marta. Marta is his mother's name. Actually, you could say Martha. Well, sometimes he's called Abba Bar Manyume. He's called Abba Bar Manyume, the same person. So this Abba came to visit Rava. So there was an over, uh, uh, made sure Rava Zakaif. Rava made sure that the chair that Abba was supposed to sit on was sitting upright, that he shouldn't commiserate with him. Uh, so Abba Bamamurta, when he came, Kafi, he turned over the chair and he wanted to sit like, you know, on par with Rava on the floor, on, you know, on the overturned bed. Omar, so Rava said, This young rabbi has no common sense. I, I made the, the, the steer straight. I don't want him to sit low like I'm sitting low. He's not my friend or my colleague. And therefore, he's making me feel uncomfortable by sitting low like I am. Tanurabar, the rabbi is taught, if you're going from place to place, let's say you're in the middle of traveling, a person who is in the middle of traveling on a business trip in those times, and then they told him that his father and mother passed on. So if you can minimize your business, because normally a dover ha'aved, we don't allow you to do. If you lost your father and mother, you should stop working. You're an oval. But here, you're already on the business trip and you're not in your home. So then you should minimize your business you might try to minimize it as best as you can. Vim love, if you can't do it, you're part of a group, a syndicate of, of buying merchandise or whatever. You galgel imohem, you can join up with the group and, you know, be part of it. And, and, and uh, in other words, you don't have to interrupt this business trip, even though it's your father and mother, since you're not at home, it's the, the chacham and we're understanding that you shouldn't make, take a major, major loss uh, because of this. Tanur Abonim. Now the rabbis taught, when does Shiva start? Now, when should you like remove your shoes or do other things of availers? But in those days, remember, they used to turn over their beds. So when they, of all, so Masai Koifen Esamitis, when should you turn over your bed after the, the, the mace passed on? So the first cheat is, Mishiyetzi Mi Pesach Beisei Div Rebbe Lezer. Rebbe Lezer says when they take the, the, the corpse out of the house, that's when you have to turn over the beds. Rabbi Yeshua, I mean, Rabbi Yeshua says, Mishi Yisasem HaGoylel, when they bury the person. Let's learn that when they bury the person, that's when Avela starts, and that's what we pass it. Now the story begins, Masa Shemes Rabbi Gamliel HaZokim, Rabbi Gamliel HaZokim passed on, the old elder Rabbi Gamliel, Kivin Shiyosim HaPesach Beisei, as soon as they removed the body of Rabbi Gamliel out of the house, so Rabbi Eleazar was with the family, he said, Amalhem Rabbi Eleazar, Kfirfim Yitaseichem, start your Avela now, turn over the beds, they're removing the body out of the house. The cave in Shanista Magoyla, after the funeral, and they buried the Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Yeshua came to the house. Rabbi Yeshua, now is the time that you have to turn over your bed. Because now the Shiva starts, the Avelis, uh, on August Avelis starts. Amrulay, so the family told him, we already turned over the beds because Rabbi Lezah Hazokin, he was with us when Rabbi, Rabbi Gamliel passed on. He told us already to turn over the beds. Tanur and the rabbis taught, 
Now, on Erev Shabbos, you stop sitting Shiva, right? And you straighten out the beds. So for the Bryce asks, when are you permitted to straighten out the beds, put it back to normal on Friday afternoon? So the answer is from, from let's say from 1230 and on, from according to most, it's from the, from the early Mincha on, I think, from the early Mincha. Omar Barav Huna, Barav Huna said, Alpha Pekin, even though you straightened out the beds, you can't sit on a normal bed until it's dark, till it's Shabbos, because really you're supposed to sit Shiva. But the, the reason why they allowed you to start turning over the beds is so that you shouldn't leave things for the last minute and it's Erev Shabbos. So therefore you can start already uh, getting things back to normal on Friday afternoon. Ulamatsa Shabbos, let's say you're supposed to sit Shiva on Sunday. So Lamatsi Shabbos, after, so you could say, oh, it's Matzah Shabbos, I'm getting up Sunday, let me not, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have to, you know, turn over the beds. No. Even if you only have one day left, you turn over the bed on Matzah Shabbos and sit on the overturned bed on Matzah Shabbos. Because although you say Mitzah Sayoim Kekulai, that part of the day is like the whole day, but that's only in the morning. The day of, the last day of Shiv in the morning, you can finish your shiva by just sitting for 10 minutes. But on the night before, even though it's the night of the seventh, you still have to sit the entire, entire time. Tadar Abanam. Tadar Abanam, the rabbis taught. When we say turning over the bed, it's not your own bed you're turning over. Every bed that you had in your house, you have to turn over. Even if you have 10 beds in 10 different rooms of your house, you overturn over the, all of them. Even if you have five brothers, they live in five different houses. One brother died. All the brothers, when they go home, they have to turn in their own private house, they have to turn over the beds. Now that Bryce says, if it was a bed that's designated not to sleep on, but rather a bed that you put uh, like, a, you know, picture frames on or something like that. It's not a bed that's meant to sleep on. It looks like a bed. You don't have to turn it over. The reason why you turn over the beds to begin with is because that's something that's used by humans and a, and a major function sleeping on. And we learned before that just like uh, the, this person that passed on, uh, uh, humans in general, overturned the Tzelem Elikim, the image of God, by, by not uh, living up to their, their expectation on this world. So when they pass on, we turn over the beds. But only beds that are used by humans, not used by, you know, putting picture frames on. Now, Dargush, the Gebraisa doesn't explain what a Dargush is, but it's a type of bed. You don't have to turn it over. Actually, you stand it up against the wall. You can imagine that instead of turning it upside down, you just put it up against the wall like a ladder. Rabshim Begam says, this Dargash bed, Mater as Karbitov, you untie the, the, the ropes that attach the mattress, so to speak, to the side posts. And it falls down by itself. So it's not clear what a Dargash is, and we're going to explain that right now. My Dargash, what is a Dargash? So the first, Gemara's first attempt at explaining that is Oma Ula Asr Degada. It's a bed not used to lie down on, but look at Rashi. Rashi says over here, Mita Shemiachten Oyser Lamazal Tov. It's a bed that you keep, nobody sleeps on, and, and it's just a bed that brings good luck to the house. It's like something that somehow like a good luck charm uh, type of bed. Amalei Rabba, uh, so Rabba said like this, if that's what an, a dargish is, and therefore you don't have to turn it over, El Ma'ata Gabi Melech, a king. The Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah, Kolo Amus, when the, the king is sitting Shiva, Kolo Amus Subin al everybody's on the ground, Hu Mesiv al Dargosh, and he's supposed to be on this dargosh. So dargosh is not used for humans, it's just uh, like a muzzle type of bread. Is it possible that nobody who sits on such a bed? Now that the king is sitting Shiva, by Svinale, we put him on to that bed? It makes no sense. It wasn't used for humans till now. So that cannot be the word what Dargash means. So Maskil Ravashi, so Ravashi asked back, why are you so difficult? 
we put him on something that's not used before. Midi, it's very similar to the By eating and drinking for the Oval. Until now, he never, the king never ate from somebody else's food. He ate his own food and never drank anybody's drink except his own. Hashta now, we actually give food for the king as if he has, can't afford it or and give him to drink. So he's doing strange things. So the strange, one other strange thing is that he doesn't have to sit on the floor, but he sits on this mazel bed. So the Gemara says, okay, fine. I'll, uh, I'll prove to you that it's not a mazel bed. Eli, Kasha, I'll say, here's a question. Hi, Kasha, this is my question. Dargosh ain't So you tell me a dargosh, you don't have to turn it over. El zoikvoy, you turn it upside up, up on its side. Vids arsa the gada. If it's a mazel bed, amai ain't it sarch lekpaisa. Why shouldn't I have to turn it over? Ha tnan a koyfe mitosay lo mitosay bevadu koyfe el kol mitosay sheyesh lo besoich besoich koyfe. We said that at every bed in your house you have to turn over. So why would the bargosh be any exception to that? To that rule, every bed the Mishnah says you have to turn over. So Gemara says, "My kushya, what's the question? There are certain beds you don't have to turn over. If it's a bed that's designated to put picture frames on it, or something like that, you don't have to turn it over." The time you learned to the brisa, "Im If it's a mita that's designated for items, ain't it You don't have to turn it over. So this mazel bed, you don't have to turn it over. So, so far, the Gemara interpreted that Dargosh is a mazel bed. Now the Gemara is going to say, no, I'll sh- I have a very difficult uh, uh, question if you interpret it that way. Eli kasha ha kasha. If this is my question, you untie the ropes of the mattress and it falls by itself. If it was just a mazel bed, my karbitin isle, does a mazel bed have like a mattress on it? It's just for show. So it looks like a bed. It's probably a piece of wood. It's not something that has a mattress or ropes attached to it. So your interpretation of what a dargish is, is incorrect. So ki also Ravin, when Ravin came, amalahu haumer abonam, Rav Tachlife bar marava shmei, his name is Rav Tachlife. In other words, Ravin came, and he told it, he said over that this Rav Tachlifa told me what it is. Rav Tachlifa was somebody who uh, frequented tanners. And basically what the Gemara is going to say is that the dargosh is a type of cot that was made of leather. My dargosh, arsa de tzala. It's a bed that has a piece of leather on it. So I have the picture over here. They make a nice picture. This is called a darga. So it's not like a bed. So basically, one you, it's connected with ropes on it. So let's go back into the Gemara. So it menami dargish A dargish is has ropes attached from the inside. Mita seruga al gabar. If it's a bed, it has ropes on top of it. So you can see in the picture over here that if it's this type of bed, you put it this way. If it's that, and if it's this type of bed, it's like rope attached with ropes. So the Gemara explains, Amar, so therefore, Amar Ab Yaakov Bar Ach, Amar Shuba Leve, Halach Rab Shimem Galil. The Halach is like Rab Shimem Galil. Now, let me explain you why this Dargush, they didn't want you to turn it over. Since it's made of leather, if you turn it over, it's going to make the leather, the leather dirty. So you're very, you're hesitant to do so. So one from on the Amar said, just put it up on the side. Just stand, you don't turn it over, but do it this way. Just stand it up. But another man, the Amr says, no, you, you, uh, Rav Shimon Galil says, you don't have to, you can't stand it up on the side. You have to loosen the ropes, let the leather fall to the floor, but the, the back of the leather will hit the floor, not the top part, which will remain clean. So that would be fine. A meat, a bed that has is like a two prong bed. In other words, it has four, it has two posts at the one at the leg and one at the top. Like uh, I think this is the picture. The picture is it has two posts coming out of it. So it's hard to turn it over. So what it is, is you put it up on the side. That's what he's saying. It's the uh, zaikva, you just put it up standing up, but it's enough. Tanar abonim. 
Yoshan al Gabi Kise, if you slept on a chair, Al Gabi Dunay Gdoil or a large stool, Al Gabi Karka, even if you sleep on the floor, so you think you're doing something nice. Uh, you, you didn't fulfill your obligation. What obligation? You didn't keep the mitzvah of turning over the bed. That's not enough. You have to actually turn over the bed. And so ends the sugi of turning over the bed. But the point is that we don't do that today because it's it, 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 it's not a, a, it's a type of custom that if the goyim would see us doing that, they would really think we're doing magic. And therefore... Uh, they dropped that minig that was round in the time of Chazal of turning over the bed. Turn around, Rabban, the rabbis taught. During the Shiva, Mechabdin, you're allowed to sweep the house. Umar beats and you're allowed to put water around the house to keep the dust down. Bebeis Ovel. Umadichin Ka'ares, Vekoises, Sloiches, Vekitonius, Bebeis Ovel. You're allowed to wash the dishes, the glasses, even if you're not using it right now. Let's say the, 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 the Ovel you know, sees dirty dishes in the sink and he gets nervous, he's allowed to wash them. You can't bring sweet smelling uh, perfume and spices to the base of all. You don't bring that. That's already, you know, is too much. Making smelling, smelling like a nice hotel. So the Gemara says, Aini, that's not true. When you're Matzah Shabbos, if you're making Havdalah, you don't make the bracha on the Mugmar or Besamin in the house of the Oval. Uh, so, because you don't make these extra brachas, but you, the bracha you don't make, but you're allowed to bring it, the sweet smelling stuff into the house of the Avel. So the Gemara says, Loi kashe. it's not a difficult. Ha bebeis Avel, in the house of the Avel, where the dead body is there, you're allowed to bring the besamim there, and you don't make a bracha. And the reason is because the whole point of bringing besamim is, is to, you know, override the smell of the corpse. So that's not a bracha that you make on the besamim. It's just to take away the smell of the corpse. Ha, but the other scenario is when you're not allowed to bring uh, besamim into the base of into the, into the house is bevei samanachman. If they took out the corpse and now the whole reason why you're bringing this besamim is to make it smell like a hotel that you're not allowed to do in the house of the mourner. Mishnah begins. The first, uh, the first thing that you do, the first meal has to be brought. Not only the first meal, any meal that the that the, the oval eats the first day has to be brought uh, for him by his friends. Now it was like shlachmonis. People used to bring fancy. If you know a rich guy, you're sitting shiva. The friends used to bring these beautiful trays and full of laden with food. So the Mishnah says, "Ain malichin lebeisa evil. Don't bring to the oval's house." Not these fancy type of trays, bowls, and, you know, uh, oddly shaped uh, uh, carrying items. Ella Basalam, you bring the food in a, in a basket made of, of uh, peeled, you know, um, willow trees. In other words, in a very cheap basket. Why should I not bring nice? Because the rich people had all the nice people bringing them fancy food and on fancy trays. The poor people did not have that. And therefore, poor people will feel sad when people are starting to bring them food in, in not such nice looking uh, ba uh, baskets. Therefore, they made it, everybody has to be the same. Doesn't matter, a rich person sitting shiva or a poor person, you bring the food in a cheap looking basket. Now back to Chalamoid. You don't say the bracha on Avelim and Moid. If someone loses, if you have to, they buried somebody in Chalamoid, you don't say that bracha. After the Levi, you stand in a row. You say, You tell everybody to go home. And then the Bryce the Mishnah continues. Even though there are some people that you're permitted to, to make a hesped for, let's say a Talmud Chacham, you don't bring the bed, if he died on Chalamoid, you don't bring it into the street because that will encourage you to say long hespedim. You, 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 you probably bring it into the shul and make it a, a, a quick levaya, although you're permitted to say a hesped, but to bring it out into the street, the main highway, and, 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 and close off traffic, it, it's, you're setting yourself up to make a very long hesped. That we don't want you to do on Chalamoid. Women who die, we never make a great 
you know, you know, Leviah like we do for men in the, in the street because it's not uh, respectful for a woman to have such a, uh, a, a, a such a tremendous Leviah. So Tanur Abanam, we'll learn more about that in the Gemara and the reasons. Tanur Abanam, now the Gemara is just going to give you just like um, uh, a bunch of things that they changed the rule uh, because poor people were getting embarrassed. It's like almost like the uniforms in schools. So, so they didn't want nobody to feel slighted. So look what the Brisa says. Brishayna. They they used to bring to the Avil's house Ashirim, rich ever rich people would bring clusters shall kasev shalzov trays of silver and gold. The Anim and the poor people, Bisali Nitsarim shall rava kalufa. They would bring baskets of peeled a willow, a willow tree basket. For Anim is Baishan, even poor people. Either the sitting shiva are poor, or the people bringing them are poor, were were slighted. So iskinu they made a new rule. So the honor, no one that the poor person should not feel slighted. Everybody has to bring the food with the same basket. They would give the wine to drink. A wine, uh, oval, uh, uh, oval is supposed to drink a, a wine. So a rich person, b'schuches levana, in a white uh, goblet, b'aniem, b'schuches svua, would give a, it would be in a cloudy um, glass go uh, goblet. In other words, because the rich person has a nice looking wine, so he wanted everybody to see the wine that he's drinking. The poor person doesn't want you to see that he's drinking cheap wine. Vayaniem is paishin, the niem were very embarrassed. He skinu, they made a new rule. She hakol mashkin b'schuches svua, b'nei kvoidim shalaniem. Everybody should drink from this colored glass because to give honor to the uh, poor people, they shouldn't feel slighted. Here's something very, very, very strange. Berishayna in the beginning, in Hoyamagalim Pnei Ashirim, by the funeral, like a, like a Havdol awake, uh, they would actually uncover, everybody could see the dead person's body. In other words, if he was a rich guy that died, everybody wanted you to see his face. In other words, to show, oh, look at this beautiful face. It's now going into the ground and be, being eaten by worms. But when Ani was you know, in the coffin, in the, in the funeral home, they would cover his face. They didn't want you to see his face because uh, he had an ugly face because of years of fasting. Because it was black. Because of the hunger. And poor people were embarrassed. They made a new rule. They made a new rule. Everybody, every Leviah, we cover up the face of the dead. For the honor of, of poor people. So if you never knew why Jews don't have wakes, now you know. In the beginning, they used to bring the wealthy people in this type of cot. The poor person would come out, we go to Ahmed Bey's, in a cheap, you know, you know, wooden bed. Everybody should come out in this wooden bed. So now, in the beginning, if somebody was was, um, but but if somebody, um, if somebody was uh, sick and had intestinal problems, so at the Leviah would smell because he died, his intestines ruptured. So in the beginning, somebody who died from an intestinal issue, they would put uh, some sweet smelling spices under his body. So anybody who was sick with the intestinal problems would embarrass because they know that when they die, people, their levi is going to be very different than everybody else because they're going to put spices underneath. Everybody gets these smelling spices. Those that die with an intestinal problem. But we showing in the beginning, when, when Anita died, and it seems that everybody knew a woman was Anita, and that not like today, but there was times everybody knew the woman was Anita. So when she died, once you go into the mikvah, they brought into the mikvah all vessels that she used. Just once you're tivaling her, tivel all the vessels that she used, because Anita is Matama, all her vessels when she's died, when she was alive. Every live Nida was being embarrassed, thinking that if I die tomorrow, they're going to put my whole uh, possessions into the mikvah along with me. For some reason, 
they made a rule that anytime a woman dies, you take all her possessions and, you know, all her kalim and, and, and take it into the mikveh along with her. Barishayna will do last last one. Barishayna hoya matbilim. Same idea. When a Zav died, they would, would bring into the mikvah all his possessions. And, and the, the Zavs, the live Zavs, were, were embarrassed by that because they think that when they die, their Levi is going to be very different. So they, they, they made a rule that everybody who dies, you put his possessions into the mikvah. And the final thing is like this. Very shine in the beginning. The cost of a Levaya was more expensive than the hospital bills of his death. Uh, the the, the, the Levaya was a big thing. So certain people, when they died, the, the relatives would say, you know, fend for yourself. And they don't want to have anything to do. They don't want to pay for the funeral. Rabbi Gamliel came and made a new role. He says, my shroud should be just a linen clothing. And that's why everybody, the minig is, you don't dress up with a suit. We don't have big coffins, uh, fancy uh, coffins. It's just a clay pishton and a cheap uh, coffin. Cheap uh, shrouds and a coffin. Even with a piece of canvas that costs one zuz, that should be the, the burial shrouds. You see, they, they, they were careful not to have the embarrassment. So they, they, their levias was what you, we would spend the Havdal on weddings. And I guess this is what the Takanas are all about. Anyway, we're, we're up to Ein Manichen, and the Brisa will continue tomorrow. Mezzar Shashem. Where did we leave off? We left off five lines from the, we just, five lines from the wide line on Chav Zayin Amid Beis. Ein manichin asmita berchayve. The last thing we learned is uh, um, the takanas of, they did to save the poor people from embarrassment. That was this. Ein manichin, now we're up to there. Okay. Okay, very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night.